Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and another art video. Today I'm going to be testing out this 100% cotton watercolour paper from the Bee Paper Company. I bought this paper a while back and whilst I've been using it to test out paint swatches and so on, I haven't tried it yet to paint a whole watercolour piece. Whilst I'm painting I thought it would give me a chance to share my thoughts and opinions on it, so I hope you enjoy the video and watch till the end to find out how I rate it. This 50 sheet pack of 6 by 9 inch paper cost me just over £9 on Amazon, which is pretty cheap for 100% cotton paper. It is however quite lightweight at £90 or 200 GSM, but has a neutral pH and is of archival quality. The information on the front also says that it's well sized and has a cold press surface to it. Because it's quite light paper, I taped it down onto a board to help prevent buckling and walking when I added water, but I do tend to do this with all my watercolour paintings as it also gives me a nice crisp edge to my piece. For the subject of this painting and being that it's spring and bee paper, I had the idea to paint some blossom and a bee, and I did a light outline sketch on my paper before I started. I stuck to using my Schmincke watercolour paints in pans as these are what I've been using lately and this would enable me to make a fairer comparison between the bee paper and other cotton papers I've used recently too. I also use my Derwent water brush as I find its synthetic brush tip really good for adding details with the extra benefit that you can also quickly and easily add water should you want to soften edges or pre-wet areas of your paper. Before I'd started painting I had in mind the idea of a fairly loose background with some blurry wet in wet effects but wanted the bee and the blossom in the foreground to be more detailed. For this part I thought I'd use the wet and dry method and soften any harsh edges out with clean water on my brush. That was the plan anyway, so I started off using a light wash of magenta on some of the petals using the wet on dry method. This was just to map out where everything was and create a very pale base layer before going back in with more concentrated paint whilst the paper was still wet. I wanted the darker colour to bleed out into the lighter areas to give a nice effect for the petals. However, as you can see close up, the bleeding out effect was pretty minimal and not at all like what I was used to with other cotton papers. It was almost like the paper held onto the paint so I didn't really get the effect I was after. Rather than being able to render each flower as I went along, I realised I was going to have to go back over once the first layer was dry to add further details later, and this was pretty frustrating. So far as softening edges with clean water, I had mixed results. This technique did seem to work if done straight away, but once the paper had started to dry, no amount of scrubbing or lifting would work. Some of this could be to do with the magenta watercolour I was using being semi-staining, but I've not noticed it being so much of a problem before. So at this point in the painting, rather than enjoying it as I'd hoped, I was just getting more and more frustrated, as I thought the painting was drying really splotchy, a far cry from the light and dainty blossom look I was going for. I carried on though and when it came to working on a bit of the background, I was keen to see if the wet on wet technique I'd planned to use worked any better. But whilst it did seem to work, I still wasn't overexcited by the paint flow on the wet paper. In the end, I even decided to see if changing up my paintbrush would help, so swapped in the water brush for a size 4 silver black velvet brush. Unsurprisingly though, this had little effect on how the paint behaved on the paper, but I carried on using this to fill in the larger, darker areas of background behind the blossom. When it came to the foreground and the area around the bee, I again tried to use the wet in wet method, beginning off by wetting the paper first before dropping in some pale greens and browns. For this larger area I used a larger pointy size 8 brush, which would still allow me to paint around the flower petals, but would hold more water and give me a fighting chance of getting the blurry background I was after. I think you can really see here what I mean about the colours not bleeding out very well. The purple paint in particular just doesn't seem to want to move much, and whilst you might want or like this more controlled reaction, it just isn't what I'm used to and I couldn't really work it out. The only thing I thought was that it could be something to do with the paper's sizing, 
but if any of you have used this paper before and can explain this to me, I would be extremely grateful. So with the painting looking more like I'd used the negative painting technique than anything else, I decided I'd darken up the branch before giving myself a bit of a break from these petals and start work on the bumblebee. I also thought this might drive some of the focus away from the flowers and also act as a contrast to the lighter values in the painting and hopefully give it some depth. This was my favourite part of the painting and I went back to using the water brush to add the fine details on the bee's body and wings. I was at least confident that the colours wouldn't bleed into each other on this paper and can see it being suitable for those of you who like to maintain more control in your paintings or who like painting illustrations for example and I quite liked how the bee turned out. I used some of the dark red brown mix that I'd used on the branches for the darkest stripes and added a few layers to build up to the value I wanted. I used a base layer of cadmium yellow light for the yellow stripes and added in a glaze of gold brown over the top to blend the colours together. The water brush did really prove to be very useful in helping me to get the fine detail for the bee's antenna, legs and wings. I didn't add any black paint to the bumblebee but rather mixed up a really nice dark rich black using the colours that I got on my palette that I'd already used in the flowers, so that was indigo and some browns like burnt sienna and so on. With the bee done I felt a bit more enthusiastic about the painting so decided it was time to go back and tackle the blossom again. There wasn't much hope of softening any edges at this point so all I could do was continue to add layers and build up the shading in the hope that I could make the piece look a bit softer. I needed to add more detail to the blossoms next to the bee and build up some shadow areas with the addition of some more purple and indigo glazes. I also added in some darker values to the centre of the blossoms and used more of the negative painting technique to emphasise the shape of the petals while still trying to leave some areas white to add contrast. This technique wasn't the one I'd planned on using but I had to try and adapt to make it work. It's often the case that the painting I have in my head is a different one to what I get on paper but it doesn't mean it's a fail, just another challenge and another lesson learned. And paper aside, I'd also taken on the challenge of drawing something new with the blossoms, as I haven't had much practice with botanical paintings, but it's good to step outside your comfort zone sometimes and try new things. It's also important to remember not to expect too much of yourself when you do, and be proud of those first attempts rather than be hard on yourself for not getting it right first time. That said, it took me until this stage in the painting before I finally felt relaxed and could see it coming together. And with the many layers of shading added to all those petals, it was at last time to add in the finer details to the inside of the petals and give you my honest opinion on this bee paper. It is just my opinion though, so please do bear that in mind. Ultimately, I really wanted to like this paper. It's really cheap for the amount you get and it's cotton, so has some advantages over regular cellulose or wood pulp paper. It withstood my many layers of water and paint and didn't bobble or warp, but I did get really frustrated with it. It seemed to grab onto the paint and not let go, and I felt like it was a constant struggle and that I was battling against it rather than working with it. It didn't seem to behave like any other watercolour paper I have, and I almost gave up on it at one point. I'm glad I didn't, but it did mean I had to compromise my initial idea and method for this piece from the start. Sometimes that happens, but if you were to ask me if I enjoyed painting on this paper, my answer would have to be no, and I think it's the first time I've actually said I don't like anything, but I have to say it as it is to give credibility to any future reviews. I have heard people say it takes time to get used to this paper, so maybe it's not fair to judge it on one painting. Whether it's for you or not will also depend on what you paint, what medium you use and what style or techniques you favour in your own artwork, but for the things I like to paint and the techniques I like to use, I'm not sure it's for me and for the time being at least I shall continue to use it to try out ideas, sketches and colour swatches rather than use it for more finished paintings. 
I do think it would be interesting to try gouache with it too because being thicker and more opaque you tend to paint differently with it compared to watercolour. I'd love to hear from anyone who's tried this bee paper before and what you thought of it as it does seem a bit of a shame to have to relegate it to the swatch paper pile. Maybe you've also got some tips or tricks for making the most of the different properties this paper has to offer. It also tends to grab onto your washi tape quite well too. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and maybe found it useful in some way too. Let me know what you think of the finished painting and don't forget that Friday's video will be on Thursday this week in set. So be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification if you want to see more watercolour art. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Thank you so much for all your support and for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!